we are back. So, right, I like the detail that Sorsha is worried about the attacks on settlements, you know, and the white guy she's married to, you know, dismisses it. And because a lot of men do not listen to women. And yeah, we find out, you know, Eric is the son of Matt Mardigan. He does really look and behave a lot, like, yeah. And apparently the, you know, they specifically, the, the evil forces specifically attacked to take Eric. <laughs> I love that... Oh, hold on, right, I accidentally... Let's see, so the... Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we find out early on that, you know, I can't believe I'm... But Laura is missing, and they had... You know, they've long been one realm, but separate kingdoms, and now they're going to try to, you know, unite the kingdoms with the marriage... And, let's see, you know, and yeah, it basically is, it is this thing of, you know, Sorsha thinks that she knows a better way of, you know, yeah, and her daughter does not, at least at this point in the show, and... Yeah, and, and, you know, Kit is upset that Jade is leaving and, you know, talks about how she does not get to choose her future. And... Yeah, and, and we also learn, you know, Kit is upset that Mad Mardigan left. And... Yeah, Eric says he does actually want Dove. And yeah, Kit is planning to run away. And, you know, she tells Jade this after Jade has gone to bed. She, she climbs into her bed atop her and kisses her. So... I, I think it would be... Can something be both pathetic and really funny if there are people who watch this and say, oh, they're, they're such good friends. They're, they're definitely not together, though. Let's see. And, you know, it's, she's not... You know, Jade is not trying to talk Kit out of doing what she wants. Because she has known her long enough to know that is not going to happen. But she does try to tell her, you know, at least wait longer. Don't leave already. And the fog rolls in on Halloween in Precinct 13. So that's, yeah. And, you know, you have the, the thing with... Uh, uh, let's see. I th yeah, yeah. Dove tells Eric, "Be careful," and he does the the sword toss move that his father did, you know, in the in the movie. So yeah, I really appreciate that. You know, like I watch a lot of horror movies, so obviously I'm not saying that like the 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 scary stuff in this show so far, at least, it's not like the scariest thing I've ever seen, but. Like with the movie, it is stuff that you could, you know, I, I don't know that you want to show a child because of how intense some of this stuff gets. But, you know, at least a teenager, for sure, could could watch. You know, um, George Lucas said of Star Wars, I don't know if he also felt it of Willow, that he makes them the, the movies for 12-year-olds. And, yeah, I, I figure a 12-year-old... I, I've i read some reviews of the movie where some people who watched as children kept having nightmares about the the scene where 
you know, people are turned into pigs. So, yeah. And yeah, that's the case of the, the evil in, in this show so far. Also, it is, you know, yeah. It's not like John Carpenter or David Cronenberg scary, but it is scarier than... It's it's not just, you know, like, I, I remember being a, a kid in the, in the 90s watching... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the the 1987 show, and I was often frustrated with how goofy a lot of the the supposed evil characters were, and how they'd get like humiliated by the heroes and such. And I get, you know, there was a thing people, you know, some some people thought, but I I, I was much more into when we'd get an actually scary evil villain, you know. And, yeah, I really appreciate that, like, the film. And you also have this, you know, there's there's this grit to the world. It's a, it's a gritty world. It's not this perfect, polished, and completely clean and neat, you know. And, yeah, I, I really appreciate that. And let's see. Yeah, so, right, back to, yeah, Eric was taken. That might be why they... Attacked and Kit is so surprised. Sorsha agrees. She thinks that Sorsha must have misheard her. And Jade goes where the princess does. And I really love, you know, I uh, I do not recall his name, but the the king, the the uh, yeah, there are two kings. The the father of Graydon is like, you would let your um, wife to be travel beyond the the barrier without protecting her and you know Graydon is like well, you know I'm, I'm not mad about it but it is something that I could learn to live with just wow you know like just if you're if your dad talks to you like that Maybe now's the time to change your mind on the thing he wants you to do. Like, that's, you know, and his dad, you know, whispers something into his ears, and he joins, and, and Kit looks like she's having to take her kid brother with her when she goes to a party with her friends or something. Just, yeah, really loving the acting performances so far. And... They go to get Willow, the last sorcerer. Impressive vistas, like in the film. And let's see. Yeah, someone's following. They get off the road and turns out to be Dove. And I really, really like... You know, this, this is a show where the women have guts. Like, yeah, I've already mentioned, uh, you know, the... the yeah, Kit... Yeah, yeah. Kit is is going to, you know, she she calls out when she sees something that she thinks is is wrong, and the the you know Jade is going to be the first female knight of the you know so so yeah, and you know in order you know Dove Dove wants to go with Kit doesn't so Kit is like have you ever been in a fight and she's like like a like a verbal <laughs> which is legitimately funny like what are we supposed to use harsh language and you know that yeah it's so and and they're all like oh wow she really is clueless okay and and kit spells it out no i mean have you been in a life or death situation where you had to be a good enough fighter with a sword that you came out on top and without skipping a beat, Dove just responds, Have you? Because no, she hasn't. She hasn't. She has been practicing. She's been sparring. But she herself has not been in a life or death situation. You know, I just, yeah. And, and everybody's reacting. You know, it, the, the camera, the, the, the camera work and editing, make sure we get everybody's reaction to the kitchen maid telling the princess who will become queen you haven't been in in seven, you know i you're you're not you're not tougher than me wow 
so what can you cook out here? And, you know, it's Graydon asking that. And, you know, at the time, I was like, ah, yeah, he's, you know, he's obviously the, the weak link of this fellowship. But we also see, like, he, you know, he learns, he, he knows language stuff and all this. He is basically, like, more interested in knowing understand knowing things understanding things and experiences then stuff like fighting you know and dove really is a phenomenal cook and yeah there's no shame in that being your strength as long as that's what you want you know by the end of i i don't know if it's it's not clear yet if there's going to be more than one season but the yeah at least one season eight episodes by the end of this season, maybe we will know if, you know, she really does want to be the, the cook or if she is going to embrace her, you know, destiny as Elora Dannon. And I really, the, the, Borman talks with, with Kit and the, the, ah, uh, let's see, what, well, I, I gotta, I do not recall all the specific details, but Kit, you know, it, it's something like that, yeah, I think Kit says to Borman, you know, that, that Mad Mardigan abandoned her, and he responds something like, sometimes you know, it's it's easier to hate them. And that is a really great, like, yeah. Um, if someone close to you, you know, if, if they do something that you didn't expect, or they maybe, you know, lose contact, you, know, uh, you, you lose contact with them, it's easier to, to make up a story in your head that says... You know that it's it's intentional. They're they're trying to hurt you, so just hate them and just you know, because that is easier to process than trying to figure out. You know, I mean, there's someone I used to care about. Maybe they're not trying. You know, that that is the thing. Like, did Matt Mardigan leave, or did he die, or is he being kept? You know, so yeah, and. Dove actually does manage to get across the gorge, despite the earthquake. Wow. And, yeah, we see, well, yeah, it's not the first case of it, but we see that, you know, earlier we heard, you know, Graydon said that he recognized the language that was being spoken, and now we see he also, he's also able to read this uh, rune, I want to say, that... Nobody else there is capable, you know, um, Borman has been far and wide. He doesn't know the language, you know, and that's not like a thing on his race or something. I'm just saying, you know, he is also more of an adventurer than a scholar. And yeah, we see, you know, Dove able to get through the, the barrier, which is, of course, a hint that she is Elora. And let's see, then we have the, yeah, I, I like that, you know, multiple of the characters said, shut up, Borman. You know, yeah, one of them said, enough, Borman. And the other was like, shut up, Borman. Just, yeah. I gotta say, the, the horse action scene was the only one that was a little tough to follow for me of, of the actions. It, yeah, the scenes in general. And it is like, I, I get that because the moment that you have... You know, everyone's riding horses, you know, so, you know, when you add that onto, you know, they're firing bows and arrows at each other, and they're trying to escape from one, you know, the, these kinds of things, um, yeah, I, I hope, you know, it, it wouldn't really be Willow without high-speed chases, so I just hope that in the future ones that we're, I'm, I don't doubt we're gonna get, I hope that they may be, you know, it's often it can come down to how familiar is the DP with this kind of thing, or, or the director themselves. But but yeah, 
you know, the, the fight when Eric was taken, I found much, much easier. I, you know, I could probably recount it beat for beat if I really badly wanted, but I don't think anybody does want me to do that, so I'm just gonna not. But, but yeah, once they were riding, there were a couple of times where I had trouble completely telling, it's just, yeah. And I really appreciate Kit apologizes to Graydon, you know, and he shows some personality for the first time in in the yeah and and it, when when talk, when when dealing with her at least you know and yeah it's it's a great kind of you know this is this is not a show where the women are perfect and never make a mistake because that makes for a boring character it's a show where you have women who are very capable, but there are some things that they struggle with. And yeah, you know, she is very eager to, to run out and, and have adventure. And, you know, she was about to run out on, you know, Graydon. And, you know, the, it's, it's the kind of thing where running away isn't going to solve the thing, you know. It's, it's the... Um, there's obviously, you know, I, I completely get why she'd be frustrated, but she basically, she kind of has to talk her mother out of it. And, and I realize she tried that. But, yeah, running away is not, a, uh, that's not really going to solve the, the overall issue. So, you know, and, yeah, she, the way she treated him was not quite called for. You know, it, it basically, she was frustrated with her mother and with Jade, and she kind of took it out on Graydon when he wasn't really, like, be, you know, he shouldn't have, have what, what's it called, shoulder-checked her like that. That was, you know, dude, if you're going to get married, you got to be nice to you. Know, it, not, yeah, it's not okay to do that to, to anyone, but especially someone that you're about to, yeah, so... And yeah, she apologized, and she apologized unreservedly. She wasn't like... You know, you you sh really should be nice. You know, he hasn't really done anything wrong. He's just not very, and and he explains. You know, well, I I'm not thrilled about it either. You know, that's why he wasn't very impressive when they they met. You know, she she explains she curtsied like a lady, and he what was it? She he grunted and looked at the ground or something like that. You know, uh, you know, and and yeah, it it is this thing of. He's just as unhappy with the idea as she is, and that's how he shows it, you know. And, yeah, we find out that uh, Dove is indeed Elora. I, I quite liked the, the, the yeah, and, and it ends on her going, what? And the, the um, yeah. I, I realized this was said early in the episode, but but yeah, yeah. When when ah, uh, let's see. When she when when Kit apologizes to Graydon, he says, "When we are when we are in charge, we don't have to do things the way our parents did." And you know, obviously, to to make that a bit more general, I would rephrase it as former leaders, and that is one of the most important issues today. Is we have to stop, like, the the way that things are being done now, with just way too little done about climate change, student debt, you know, there's, there's a huge swath of issues affecting young people today and future generations, and the people in power are not doing anything, and that's, yeah, you know, getting out the message that we have to you know, things have to be done in a different way. That's an extremely important message today. I did not expect them to reveal Elora already, but I like the decision. It's, uh, you know... Yeah, I'll, I'll just very briefly note, uh, you know, the, the longer you keep something like that secret, the less time you have to develop. And in the second episode, there's a lot of development of the idea. You know, we see various characters reacting to the idea that this really is Elora Dano, De Dana, uh, yeah, and we have the, um, we, yeah, we have Dove herself 
struggling with uh, you know these these expectations and all this that's much more interesting than you know near the very end you know like i don't know maybe maybe the the crone is like you fools you thought you could keep elora dana away from me but you have brought her right to me and you know one of them is like we don't have elora dana you know and she like points directly to to dove who lifts her sleeve revealing the mark you know something like that as as like a twist you know that kind of thing can be good but here like it's really interesting to grapple with this cuz and and this is not a criticism of the movie the movie itself does not really examine the idea of is elora De you know basically the movie no you know not everybody in the movie immediately accepts it as true but the people in the movie who understand magic recognize how important she is and you know start the the questing and yeah this is a, a very you know and and yeah i i don't think it would be particularly interesting to examine while the character is still an infant but now she's you know she's a teenager she's fallen in love with someone and it is you know you have this yeah it's it's i i really appreciate that they're they're going that way and let's see yeah i um i did mean to watch the episodes and shoot this video yesterday when the videos well, uh, when the two episodes first premiered but i had a very busy day i did not get to it so doing it today and that does mean that i can't believe i am uh it's gotta be here somewhere okay so word search here we go screen crush already released videos talking about both episodes separately so about easter eggs and such and jesse gender also released her video which I wholeheartedly recommend. Now, that brings us to episode two, which is. Oh, hold on. There we go. The High Aldwin. So, yeah. Did not expect the episode to open on the storybook again. I like it as a stylistic choice. Maybe it is just because it's a flashback. And yeah, Disney do have de-aging completely. You know, they, they know exactly what they're doing with that. If you don't remember how bad it used to be, do yourself a disservice and watch just the first chunk, maybe 20 minutes, of Tron Legacy from 2010. And let's see. Yeah, so we see Sorsha very harsh say you're not a great sorcerer and you never will be and it is you know i i appreciate that they are because he had not proved it by the end of the film you know very fairly recently uh distracted nerd is his name put out his video breaking down the movie and he points out you know there at the end it's just the disappearing pig trick again you know he doesn't really master sorcery over the course of the the film now and i really appreciate you know essentially this is um no a holes here situation sorsha legitimately believed they have to keep i can't believe i'm playing her, elora safe they have to keep her hidden so that the evil cannot get to her and willow does legitimately believe if we don't, you know, if I don't train her as a sorceress now, maybe it'll be too late when, you know, so, yeah. It's not safe here. Take this. And Mims is apparently played by the actual daughter of Warwick Davis. That's really cool. And, you know, whenever there's, like, you know, someone who's hired that isn't a straight white cis man... You know, conservatives are like, ah, you know, 
affirmative action. She can actually act. I... I find it extremely difficult to believe that anyone looks at the performance by the... I... Let's see her name. You know, playing Mims. And does not think that she's doing... A, she's giving a really compelling performance. You know, at first, she's just... Like, it's just this... Um, what's it called? Like, like c comic relief kind of thing. But once... Oh, hey, The Scourge is played by Juna Suatomo, who also played Chewbacca in the new... Anyway, yeah, her name is Annabelle Davis. And this is not the first time she is acting. Let's see, she was... Oh, as far back as 2011. But this does not say when she was born, so I don't know how old she was at that time but but yeah um let's see and her, her brother is harrison davis named for harrison ford maybe that's that's nice uh let's see but but yeah you know once she's like talking straight truth to the the you know to her own father whether you're talking about the character or the actor, actress. Yeah, that's a really strong performance. You know, she she lays down the truth and, and points out, you know. And, you know, for those who say, ah, why is, why is Willow now taking orders from, you know, his female family members? Well, in the first one, it was his wife who said, you have to take the baby to the, you know. And if she hadn't convinced him to do that, you know, the, the, um, Bav Morda and her forces would have gotten to Elora before the, yeah. Let's see. And, and I do think she does a good job on the, on the comic relief, you know, the, you were just the most beautiful baby and you still are beautiful, not a baby. And Willow is now the High Aldwin, and he's not quite as confident, and he doesn't quite have the crowd like the the High Aldwin in the film, who I believe, you know, a, a number of the actors have unfortunately since passed. I think he was one of them. And Dove gets the finger test wrong, even with Willow mouthing the answer sure. That was, you know, it's, it's a great, like, obviously they gotta do the finger test because member berries, this is, you know, the, this show exists in part because people still really passionate about this old movie. Wow, now I sound like MCU Peter Parker. And, and 1988 is not old. Anyway, so, of course, you gotta do the, the big thing, you know, and, and to make it a little different, you know, now Willow is, you know, um... What's it called? Te he's he's testing her instead of being tested, and he literally mouths like if she just just is it because she's so insecure that she doesn't pick up that he's literally mouthing the answer? Actually, yeah, I, th I think that is. Let's see, and yeah, you know the the Willow got the finger test wrong as well, and now he's well him and that brings us let's see yeah i i like the detail that graden writes down like directions like the the you know he's he is legitimately like interested in learning more you know Let's see. Yeah, and, you know, I already mentioned, you know, sometimes women on the show make mistakes, and sometimes they're called out rightly by other women, you know, and sometimes they express fear or insecurity or such. Let's see. And in general, I, I really appreciate, you know, the, the show has... Yeah, what's the word? Like, characters actually express their emotions. It's not this, like, really... Um, 
low simmer kind of it's it's bar there's barely anything there they they feel feelings and express them and we see Valentine fully taken over by the wound magic and you know we we don't see the entire thing but he like rushes at the the people with him in this very like creepy way and let's see. Yeah, and you know, like yeah, the the show, like the film, basically is conveying the message that even the least of us contains greatness, or at least potentially contains greatness. Uh, you know, in in the movie that was Willow, and now it's Dove, who's not sure if she really is Elora Dana Dana. And I I like the the magic lessons. And I, I like in the in the flashback, the line big, small. You'll find it's all a matter of perspective. Very true. And in the flashback, Sorsha th still thinks that all Willow can do is the disappearing pig trick, since that was, you know, one of the like in in the film he couldn't do much else. And I can imagine some conservatives would probably say this is a betrayal of the character. If you go back and watch the movie, like, okay. He does manage to turn... Ah, crap. I... So many names, too many names. Um, the... the What's her name? Riz Rizelle, maybe. The, the good... Uh, yeah, yeah, Rizelle. And, yeah, he did manage to turn her human, but he really struggled through it the whole way, you know. And, yeah, other than that, like, yeah, he did the disappearing pig trick, which isn't magic. It's, it's like, close-up magic. It's a stage act. And, I, you know, yeah. I, yeah, in the show, he actually is a, a sorcerer. He does actually know magic, when in the movie, he really didn't quite get there over the, yeah. And Mims tries lying to Ballantine, but, you know, he realized it can't be true because of tracks. I really hope that she is unhurt, but I I kind of doubt it. And it, you know, in the film, like, people died. People in, actually, yeah, um, I meant to mention that before when I was talking about, you know, the show does actually have, you know, the, the evil beings are somewhat scary. Uh, you know, there was one shot where someone got, like, an arm, I think, cut off. And there was some blood spray, so they are pushing it further with, with you know, that's, yeah, you know, on, on Disney+. Plus. But, uh, let's see. And... Right, and, and the, yeah, apparently Dove's real name is Brunhilde. I'm, I'm going to keep calling her either Elora, which is what she's, uh, actually, yeah, I guess it's disrespectful to her to call her Elora. I will keep calling her Dove. I did not think about that until just now, but yeah. And she thinks all she is, is a cook. Let's see. And yeah, um, Borman says playing healers and nurses, playing doctor. That's, I mean, I guess the the if any kids are watching, they don't understand what that means. But yeah. And Graydon offers helping Elora with the book. And they talk. Who am I? Now she's got amnesia? And Graydon says she's the only one to not see how extraordinary she is. And we see the rest of Willow's vision. He thinks that Elora has to die. And Dove tries the spell again. And Ballantine takes her. And then we see that this final time the spell did work. And you know, again, uh, screen, uh, whoops, 
that was not the right. Here we go. Screen Crush did a good job in their video talking about why the spell worked this time. You know, I would say this is a show I, I care about each of the characters here. Like, I... I'm not the biggest fan of the rogue character. Not not the not the character class in D&D, &D, but the, you know, yeah. But I do kind of want to see Eric again. I, I hope that it's not going to be the kind of thing where he's just, uh, you know, I know, I know. It's, I hate being the straight white cis guy, you know, talking about an episode of a show that has a lot of diversity and saying... You know, I miss I miss the straight white cis guy, but he is actually kind of charming, and he did, you know, when he he did try to help a kit, kit. So yeah, but but the yeah, I care about every character. I honestly thought at at first I really thought Graydon was just gonna be a you know boring nothing of a character, but we realize it legitimately is you know we we hear kit talk about how much she doesn't want to marry him and then only later does do we hear his you know yeah and that's actually the the you know again a lot of conservatives are going to say too much diversity on this show but it it does actually ask us to empathize with him as well and say you know not all men end up marrying the, you know, some, some of them, some, uh, some of us also feel, uh, you know, f forced to marry a particular person that we don't want to, you know, so, yeah, um, I think I already said to make sure to watch the video on these episodes by Jesse Gender, but certainly, yeah, now it's been said twice in this video, and, yeah, I don't think I really have anything else. I appreciate... Right, yeah. Uh, I really appreciate that the effects, a lot of them are practical. Like, the... the I, I, yeah, I guess that is probably the Juna, Junas Suatomo, the Scourge, yeah. You know, with the big cage and everything. Like, I think some of it is maybe there's, there's some CG there. But a lot of it is practical. Like you can you can see that the way it just yeah, you know, and and the let's see. You know, it's it seems to me like there's fairly little CG so far. And what there is, it's basically stuff that they could only do with CG, like the the barrier and her moving through it, you know. Um let's see. Yeah. Uh, all of the acting, I don't feel like anyone's miscast. Um, let's see, the the music is good. I feel like so far the references to the movie, they don't feel like really, really forced. They feel fairly organic. And, you know, it doesn't, it's not like, oh, you... Ah, what's the word? Like, you can't really... I feel like you could probably get into the show even if you either just haven't watched the movie, and, you know, they do make sure to open it with this short, um, what's the word? Like, recap of the most important things of it, and, you know, yeah, that's, that's one option, people who just haven't watched the movie... And there's probably also some people who, like, watched the movie and thought it, you know, they, they didn't love it. But, you know, they like some of the cast or crew of this show, so they're giving it a chance. I feel like you could probably get into it, even if it's not, you know, even if you're not here for the, the movie thing. So, yeah. And uh, I think think that you know and yeah that is like if you are not already aware the movie itself like the show they you know they are both on Disney Plus I'm just going to double check yeah they are both so you know if you did 
if you if you haven't watched the movie recently, then you know you can you know watch it before watching the episodes. And yeah, I realize it's a little silly to say that after talking spoilers for the first two episodes, but here we are. Um, let's see. So yeah, uh, right. Yeah, I think the editing and cinematography is quite good so far. Uh, basically the only time I really thought was a little off was the, the, when they were chasing and also fighting at the same time in, in episode one. That was really the only, uh, I would say it feels real so far. Like, it feels like you could reach out and touch this magical world and it feels like it actually is made up of... You know, we we saw Kit and Jade fight these, um, it's not a mountain, rocks, I think. It's just, you know, and they've written through, they've written across grass and, you know, yeah. So it, it seems like, yeah. And yeah, the, the um, in the movie, they didn't, uh, let's see. Um, actually, I think I'm going to hold off on talking about that until I've seen more of the show first. Yeah, so I think that covers, if, I, I guess I'll just very, very quickly see if the, let's see, right, so the Gales... Right, right, yeah. Jonathan Kazdan is working on the on the show, which, I mean, so far he's doing a much better job on this than he did. Like, solo a Star Wars story was fine, you know, but it wasn't really. Oh, right, and before that, Dawson's Creek, and Freaks and Geeks. So yeah, it's. I th I think he's doing a much better job. The the writing on this show is much better in my opinion, than in the solo movie. Now, let's see. They're both directed by Stephen Wolf... Wolfenden? And... Right, he is... Right, yeah, he he was the second unit or assistant director. Uh, he has 60 credits as that, and 15 director credits. And, yeah, a bunch of it is TV, Doctor Who, I don't know any of this other stuff, I don't watch a lot of TV, I haven't watched Doctor Who, just to, I just, I know of it. Uh, yeah, that's, but, but yeah, he has, yeah, and, and some of the other, like, uh, let's see, there's, there's magic, and, like, nature in some of it. Yeah, Beowulf must definitely have at least some of that. So, so yeah, you know, he is comfortable shooting. Because that's another thing. Like, you know, the... the uh, let's see, Bor Borman said, uh, you know, the dove must have given up. Because, you know, ah, if you, if you have to sleep on... Ah, uh, what's it called? You know, one night of sleeping on the hard ground will cure any, you know, teenage romance or something like that, you know. That's not only true of real-time adventures, that's also true of going out and filming something, you know. So, like, um, Hitchcock famously shot on, you know, in... in studio as much as he possibly could like it was very difficult to get him to to leave the the studio he was he was very very comfortable there uh, you know so yeah it's you know obviously as a director you don't actually have to sleep on hard ground just because you're shooting out but you know there's mosquitoes there's like natural noises that might like freak you out or or like you know like this is not going to be a big surprise to the people in the audience of this video who already have, you know, like, maybe take 
nature hikes or something. But if you're uncomfortable hearing a noise and not knowing exactly what it is, you're not going to love being in the woods. That's just, that's not going to, it's, it's going to be very, like, um, you're going to find it very frustrating, you know. So, yeah, and a lot of cast and crew might also get kind of annoyed at the circumstances. And that's where you're going to have to be the guy who can try to get things back on track. Because if you start getting annoyed and, like, it escalates to a verbal argument or something, that's going to slow down production. Someone might get fired for that because time is money. And, just, yeah, so, you know, it, it is, it is, and, and, yeah, you can tell, you know, watching this, you can tell that the, the people are comfortable in the, the, you know, it, it, yeah, the, the, the actors themselves must have also, like, yeah, they tend to have, like, um, a boot camp kind of thing for, you know, okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna do some walking through the woods, we're gonna do some running, we're gonna, you know, you're gonna have to be comfortable around, uh, you know, these various, yeah. So, yeah, the, the people on screen and behind the camera feel legitimately comfortable you know, making this in the woods and, and these, you know, because, cause yeah, like, a lot of screen time has been in, in the woods or in sets m at least made to look like, like, I'm, f I figure the, the, uh, I don't actually know what to call it, but the place where, you know, with, yeah, the, the finger test, where the finger test in the show is, is carried out. That might be, like, in studio, but, you know, yeah, like, other than that, you know, you can see they're, they're on grass, they're in these, you know, yeah, so, so it is, that's another thing, like, um, somewhat like Andor, this doesn't really feel like it was shot on the volume, which I really appreciate, I, I kind of hope that the volume... Like, there are some really obvious uses for the volume, such as if you're shooting something, like if someone is inside a spaceship and you want them to look out the window and be able to see what they're supposed to be seeing, that makes sense. But if you're going to have people walking around, just it works really well if it's, you know, in, in nature when that makes sense and, like, yeah, on, on location, various just... Yeah, but yeah, I think that is everything. Right, I, I also, I appreciate how much color there is so far. Like, I, I guess it's not the, it's not necessarily the most colorful show, but I appreciate that it's not like really toned down as so many things to today are. You know, it's like a lot of co comic book movies, it feels kind of like they're a little bit ashamed of comic books, so they gotta tone down. I get toning down the, the color of the costume. You know, I recently watched Wakanda Forever, which is amazing. They obviously had to tone down. I mean, I am, I am very impressed that they did actually. Yeah, Namor is wearing Speedos, basically, and... Yeah, of course they had to tone down the color so it wasn't quite, you know, the character is like, like many decades old. Not quite a hundred years, but like, no, I, I, I don't think it's quite a hundred years. But yeah, you know, back then it was thought, ah, oh, this is, this is great, you know, oh, he's, he's in the ocean a lot, so he, sh he should wear Speedos, you know, it just made sense to them, but today you gotta do... I get toning down the color of the costumes and some of, like, machines and such, but it does, like, a lot of MCU movies, keeping in mind I love the MCU, a lot, there's a lot of, of color, like, they, they tone down a lot of color. I really appreciate, like, in this show, at least so far, like, you know, when they're in the forest, like, the grass is green, like, it actually looks, I mean, yeah, I guess... I guess the, what, what I'm trying to say, it, it kind of looks not at all color corrected. It kind of looks like they just 
you know, did a, a regular white balance and did just shot stuff, you know. And I appreciate, you know, there's distinction between light and darkness. Like some of the scenes, you know, like when, when Eric and, and Dove are out in the woods, you know, oh yeah, it's, it's bright and, and nice. You can understand why this is where they would cho choose to be. And then, you know, some, like you, you have really dark, yeah, yeah, like when the fog comes in and they're fighting, it's, it's very, very dark. And you get this, you know, it feels unnaturally dark. It feels like this is this is evil and it's it's going against what should be happening kind of thing you know i really appreciate that and yeah and actually it already was night but then the fog comes in and it becomes very difficult to to see one thing when was that one evil being supposed to be teleporting or was it just like he becomes temporarily temporarily invisible when he's charging up his attack maybe because it's like if he's teleporting then why is he just teleporting back to where he was now yeah it's got to be because like the first time i saw it i was like why is he teleporting but not teleporting away like he's just he disappeared briefly and then he's back to where he was yeah it's got to be some kind of thing maybe he teleports to another realm gets an gets an attack boost teleports back uses the yeah anyway Wow, I did not expect to be talking for this long. A um, little over an hour at this point. So, yeah. <laughs> I think I, I... I guess what I'm trying to say is... I really like these two episodes. I'm I'm very, very excited to see the, the remaining six. And, yeah. Just... I, I don't think I'll ever tire of watching Warwick, Dav Warwick Davis act. And, yeah. He still got it, you know, all these years later, like, you know, f like, essentially, the last time he, in a feature film, played Willow of Good, let's see, 88, so that's, what, 44? Wait, no, third. Let's see. It's got to be 34. Yeah, yeah. 34 years, you know, I mean... In that time, he could have become a grandfather, depending on how, you know... Yeah. In 34 years, you know... If you have a kid... I don't think I have to explain the logistics. Yeah. Um, really, really glad to, to see the show being so good and yeah kind of wild to be watching a fantasy thing again like i completely forgot like you know in jesse gender's video she talks about the witcher and the lord of the rings and the game of thrones it's, you know are they are they prequels both i forget uh the lord of the rings one is a prequel i'm not sure if I th yeah i think they are both prequels yeah i guess we're we're lucky that this wasn't also a prequel but anyway um yeah, I'm really glad it's a it's a legacy sequel or a legacy sequel. And yeah, you know, I don't watch that much fantasy, but the the movies of George Lucas, I I find very difficult to you know, there's there's not very many of them that I haven't watched by now. So and yes, I, re I do realize it was Ron Howard who directed, but Lucas did write. And yeah, you know, I, I quite like how George Lucas used to make. Yeah. And yeah, I that, that is absolutely everything. So I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording. I will catch you next time.